What's up guys? You are about to get your minds blown. The stuff you see in these episodes is performed by professionals or under the supervision of professionals. We insist that you do not recreate or reenact anything you see and we do not condone any illegal activities. Enjoy the show. Ebro 2022, baby. <laughs> Oh God, I better get home safe. Yeah, that's <laughs> He's ghosted! He's got some street cred. That's cool. <laughs> yeah! Well, Thanks, good dude. review on Uber right now. <laughs> it was reckless. That's a little background story on how uh, Thrashin and uh, Reckless hooked up. Not hooked up. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, guys, from New Haven, Connecticut. We are on day three here, but day like five on the road now. I'm tired. It's starting to catch up to me. So I got Gabe rolling up any minute now. He's going to grab us. We're going to run over to a coffee shop. Okay. And we're going to uh, pick his brain a little bit. All of his riding background. You last night wouldn't stop asking me questions about how to wheelie. And yeah. I think you kind of got the bug last night. I want to pick his brains a little bit on the setup on my bike, see if uh, he has any uh, insight and uh, maybe give me some t tips on how to wheelie a little bit better. Those guys do it. Man, it's crazy. They'll wheelie anything, blown out tire, like the things they do, it's insane. So yeah, I want to get a little bit more tips from them and uh, maybe I'll be wheeling soon. We'll see Gabe in a minute and we'll get into it. It's not an appealing ride here. <laughs> hey, good morning. What's up, pal? How you feeling from yesterday? To party to go back. So. Oh no, I fully threw my brother under the bus to let him take the wrath of Gina and all them. My brother was like, ah, oh. I was like, oh yeah, my brother's gonna go with you guys. He'll show you around. <laughs> Last night we're laying in bed. Well, not like. <laughs> oh yeah, you gotta delete that. <laughs> <laughs> we're chilling after you left, and Juan's like, hey, if I put lower risers on my bike, could I wheelie better? <laughs> trying to compare it to like what you guys ride and then what his bike setup like. You're pretty tall and like your setup's like shorter than my setup. Um, I just always ran like eight inch rods. Like I used to run even shorter. We used to run like Seabear like sixes. I just like eight just for like my comfortability. Like basically the heart, like we rode dirt bikes in the beginning and that's like where the like straight bar originally came from. But I just run eight cause it's like just above like my gauges on my gas tank. So it all stays in line. And if you're wheeling with high bars, it's like when you're wheeling, your hands are above your head. For a shorter rider like us, if we go higher, it's easier to put the leverage into the yeah. back seat and get it up. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh yeah. I just don't like, obviously because we go so far back, once you're on 12, the handlebars like above your head at that point. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. So what does Juan have to do to wheelie? I don't, yeah. know, I don't know if it's in the handlebar setup. That's what oh, I yeah. said. <laughs> <laughs> like Lance does a gnarly seat thing where it looks sketchy. Like well, the thing is I'm 140 pounds. Yeah. So I'm way too. And, and shorter than, than him. This fool is seven feet tall. And <laughs> and he does on my bagger too. It's crazy. Obviously seat time is like the keys to anything. Yeah. Really Other bikes when you're wheeling, you basically are dumping the the Harley is weird because you gotta like basically slip it for it to come up. Because if, if you just dump it, higher to spins doesn't hook up. Yeah, that's what I keep telling you. Like the biggest thing is making sure it doesn't spin because Harleys are easy to burn out. Oh yeah, gotta grab like anything—a Grom, uh, LTC 400 quad, like something super simple. Yeah. Going to grass field, learn the back brakes, and once you get the back brake for control, that's like who's who wants to flip a twenty thousand dollar Harley and I mean break it. But as long as you get some like like cheap and small, like a dirt bike or someone in the back brake. Once you get the back brake going, it's all your control. Once you get control, then you can just transfer it to the Harley. There you go, Juan. You got it? Yep, sick notes. All right. You guys could wheelie any fucking tire, any PSI, oh, yeah. no grip. Like, I've seen the <laughs> tires like that you guys metal. burn out. Yeah, it's on the treads. Like, how? It's just, like I said, seat timing. Once you figure it out, you've done it so many times. Like, all right, this one's gonna be super slippery. So like, you really gotta do what Lance does. Like, you'll see if I'm like on cords or something, I'm really giving it the, the yeah. beans to get it to hook up. <laughs> Can I please get a Americano and a short cup? What we want to talk about is we want people to like know your story a little bit. Well, I started riding a PW50 like pretty much everybody else. Okay. I got one when I was like four years old, so. Yep, same no story. No train of meals. My brother just sent me him and my dad, so. Okay, that was the same as me. Oh yeah. Well, what was your first bike? When I first met you like eight years ago and came on one of these type of trips, you picked me up on dirt bikes. When I first came here, you had like one in five dirt bikes out here. It was, it was hard at that age to start, I mean, spending 10 grand on a bike and start racking this. That was tough. Eventually, I mean, we made the money, made it work. So. How many dirt bikes do you have now? See, I just sold it recently. I had a KX 450, but I just sold that. I'm looking for another Wiseman 25. So you have no dirt bikes? No, yet. no like, dirt bikes. Like first, time, first time ever. Yeah, just like I feel you on that. You run a pretty wild circus out there. Oh yeah, controlled chaos for the most part though. Controlled chaos, they call it. We made it, we made it work. You came by us on the way home. <laughs> like you're sitting still. Yeah, like we were sitting <laughs> still and his helmet was on his arm. He pulls over on the side of the freeway to take his helmet off because he crossed 
cross state line and now he can take his helmet off to then rip triple digits with no <laughs> helmet on. What the fuck is wrong with you? I was sick of wearing it, it was driving me crazy. It's it's tough, it's not that we're against helmets here, but like growing up as a kid, like it just wasn't a thing. Like everybody, like my dad's been a bike club forever, nobody ever wore helmets. I was like at elementary school, we didn't live far away. Like you speak me about his Harley, like hop on, no helmet. Like you should ride home. Like I mean, it's just how we grew up. Did you ever like rip to New York on dirt bikes and stuff like that? Um, We used to truck them actually. We used to go like on the, all the like big dirt bike rides. We used to like Baltimore, Philly, uh, New York City. Holly made like the perfect comparison. And he's like riding with these dudes, especially from New Haven to New York, is like riding an hour long moto oh, with yeah. guys <laughs> on the track with you. No mirrors, no tail lights. Everyone's hauling ass, kind of splitting lanes, getting through. Full moto, I swear I had arm pump by the time I got back. Oh God, I better get home safe. <laughs> <laughs> Again, something that you can't pick up on Instagram. So like you see these little reels. You, you gotta experience it. Yeah, and it's freaking sick. Boy sent me a picture of this font. So I was like, oh, I wonder if it's this paper. City Shoes Motorcycle Stunt Show Organizer for 92,000. That's yeah. You? Yeah. No way. Look, the Daredevil Motorcycle Tricks at the annual East Coast and Stunt Show will not happen in New Haven this year. East Coast and Motorcycle Stunt Show was illegally held near the New Haven waterfront and cost the city an estimated 92,000 in overtime pay. The city has sued the organization to recoup the cost. How's that going, Gabe? Well, we're gonna see how it goes. <laughs> it's still early. <laughs> Beat him on the criminal on Obviously, they must have took it to heart. So we're standing right in front of the mailbox. This was like, in the... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what are the odds that I'm keeping this? 2017 on 15 counts of reckless endangerment, 23 counts of reckless driving, keep on getting the misdemeanors. What do you think, Juan? Is he fucked? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> they made sure they put my previous arrest in here. I had nothing to do with it. Check out, those, check out those numbers. That's where Reckless 203 came from. 15 counts of reckless endangerment, 23 counts of reckless driving. There it is. That's how you got the Instagram name. Well, so obviously when I first got on the scene, not that, I mean, the Harley stunt scene in the very beginning was like, there were some people that were like kind of hating on us because we got off their bikes. Mm -hmm. And I can understand why, but they just didn't know the backstory on it. Like I grew up on a Harley Davidson, like my yeah. dad, my family, everybody. Like, dude, I, my dad used to ride me, my mom, my sister, like four of us on the bike to like dinner. I mean, that was just like the community vehicle. Like, that's what we did. Yeah, I have ride a dirt bike now, but I'm gonna try to get a Harley. Oh later. yeah, man. Like, that, that was, was like always... the, that was always the goal. It was just hard, like fresh out of high school. Like, yeah. obviously, you guys know how expensive it is to set the thing up. So like, it was tough to get a bike. I mean, be into it for eight, 10,000 hours and then obviously destroy the thing like him and yeah. start beating on it, breaking it and abusing it. So it was just a hard hurdle to get over. It just took me some time to get there. You said that when you were 16, you got a diner. You had yeah, that Yeah, no, I had that FXR, but it was just a frame. Together and I decided I was gonna rip it all East apart. He's coasted! Yeah. yeah. So Look at that, he's town hero. Yeah, as I'm holding the newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> Ripped this whole FXR apart and was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do all this stuff to it. And then I started looking at prices and was like, I could get this is a lot more expensive. This is a lot more expensive than dirt bikes. My first real setup bike, I had a FXD. Looks like we made it to Yale, boys. Never thought I'd uh, say that. A lot of these buildings are 1800s, 1700s. Like, I almost think you guys, I think you take it for granted, but I almost think you guys don't realize like where we're from. Buildings are like, our houses are from like 1960. 50. Yeah. You know? So basically back when we started Thrash in like 2013, 2014, I would look at the hashtags like anybody was hashtagging it. We're already selling stuff online, you know? And then Gabe bought a set of our foot pegs for Mike, something about Gabe Crash, Mike's bike. So I was putting some money away, but Mike had bought one. He had it fully set up, well, it was getting set up. So we were basically sharing one bike. Like we would go down there. I still was riding dirt bikes time, but Mike had the, the DX. And we would take turns, like learn how to wheelie, doing some donuts back and forth stuff. So he was letting me ride it. I ended up uh, laying it down and I ripped the foot pegs off. So he told me obviously, to go easy and I wasn't listening. That's what led to ripping the foot pegs off. So he was like, I want the most expensive ones you could find. And it just so happens the ones I found were thrashing. <laughs> so he buys thrashing foot pegs back like in our first year of business. And I found them on the hashtag, like already posting our pegs and stuff. And I was like, damn, look at these guys. Like check out, check their wheelies out. Like, holy shit, they're crazy. So I DM'd him and I was like, you bought our pegs. Like you're rocking our stuff. Can I send you more stuff? I kind of stayed in contact. And then like a year later, I flew out to New York City just with my chick, just like to check out the city. And then I texted these guys. I was like, hey, how far away is it from New York to you guys? I took a train from New York City with my wife. She was pregnant at the time, down to New Haven. It was cold. It was like kind of winter time. Yeah. Hopping on bikes with them. Again, you don't need a helmet here or anything like that. So they were just like, yeah, ride one of these bikes. You know, I didn't, I wasn't planning on riding. First time you guys met. Yeah. In person. <laughs> in person. Yeah. yeah. They throw me on a bike. It's got to be like 30 or 40 degrees out. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's freezing. No helmet is freezing. Yeah. For a <laughs> California kid, like they have no helmets on. 
They have no gloves on. Some of them are in like t-shirts and shit. <laughs> Homie, I'm over here like leather jacket, trying to, no one has gloves to wear. I'm trying to chase these guys around. My knuckles are freezing. I can barely use the clutch. And I know I'm sounding like a little soft right now, but honestly, it was pretty gnarly. And I was just instantly mind blown. Their energy was just like through the roof. I mean, obviously I think they had a little bit, a little bit of respect for me from my previous career. So we just kind of like kicked it off and, and became friends. And I've been visiting them probably every year since so I didn't know that that's who obviously thrashing was. So I just knew Lance as like X Games Lance. Right, right. And I didn't know he was so because Mike, him and Mike were in conversation. I talked to him here and there, but I didn't know that it was the same the Lance. same Lance. Oh, shit, <laughs> and then we figured it out. And, like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's got some street cred. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I don't ride like my old freestyle rider Lance well, rides. Me and Juan are on comms the whole ride back, right? Because we're just classic old school guys with comms on our helmets. We're getting old, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and. uh the whole time I'm like, oh, that bump, oh, that bump, oh, my kidneys, oh, my God. <laughs> dude, he's talking, she's like, my Dyna's just as bad as yours, my Dyna's, and I was like, dude, this FXR is terrible. Yeah, I'm like, then I would see him hit a bump, and then his back fly off the air, and like, yeah, get off Dude, I would almost crash from the bumps. So then we get back to your shop, and he pushes my bike down, like, tries to push the shocks, he can't even move the shocks, it's like, yeah, it's not, yeah. not even it, it was compressing the tire more yeah, than, yeah. than the shocks you're doing. That's on. funny. That's the background on it. We've been friends ever since, and that's the cool thing about motorcycles, and especially the internet nowadays, is like, think about it. We're homies now. We've been friends for about eight years or something like that. And it's like all from just motorcycles, two wheels. And the amount of friends that he has when I come out here and they all accept me and they all like bring me in and from Polly to Mike to just everybody over here. It's just like insane the, the energy and the love they have for two wheels and, and that they share. And there you guys have it. That's a little background story on how uh, Thrashin and uh, Reckless hooked up. Not hooked up. <laughs> <laughs> met each other, I don't know, something like that. All right, so we're heading back to the train station. Juan, one of your goals was to hit Statue of Liberty. If we could make it happen, that'd be sick, you know? When I was younger, they did like tours at the top, but I don't think they do it anymore, that's what I heard. It's been a wild ride here. We're pulling up to the train station. Gabe and the crew did not let us down. I think they blew minds, right? It was insane. I mean, again, I keep saying it. Instagram doesn't do justice like what these guys do. It's like when you're there in person, it, it's gnarly. You have that much more like appreciation for it. They're like skills and shit. It's yeah. crazy. Catch you later, guys. Thank, Thank you, you, homie. Some, uh, Thank good you. review on Uber right now. Yeah, well, <laughs> tell me in a quick sentence what the experience in New Haven was. Reckless. <laughs> it was reckless. The food, the riding, the sights, the bikes we got to ride. Insane next level I mean what's up guys we are still here in New Haven you've seen a lot of us riding in these all new stealth gloves these are now available on thrashandsupply.com get yours today I need an early model Dyna he's got the bug if any of you guys want to buy my bike Hit me up. So Juan's got a, a late model Dyna. It has the wider tire, 49 millimeter front end. So it's the thicker forks, bigger forks. It's overall like a heavier, longer, just girthier bike, you could say. And he rode a early model Dyna, which has 39 millimeter front end, usually like a 150 rear tire. He's got the bug and he wants to do a different bike. Yeah, after riding Gabe's setup Dyna, I fell in love with it. So I think that's next thing on my list. Kind of set it up how the East Coasting guys have it set up. Found a taco spot with a line of how many people? They're making fresh tortillas over there. Fresh tortillas. Yeah. away from LA the sandwich man we met on like day one here in New York was like you guys know how to do tacos you gotta see how New York's tacos stack up against LA's Chelsea Market New York City that was good it's proper 100% throws down dude the homemade tortilla yeah I'd come back yeah comparable with LA tacos all right, so the quesadilla was a lot different than I had imagined. Not what I was used to. Have you ever seen a quesadilla like this? No, nah, not a flat one, but I mean, it's got cheese in it, it's got meat, so it's got the basic ingredients for one. Run it back. It's like the first taco on steroids. Yeah. 
Actually, some of the best tacos I've ever had. Juan, what do we got? Yeah, dude, honestly, take away the location thing here because it's just up there with all of the best tacos. It's up there with the LA tacos. It came out swinging. Everything was super tasty. Honestly, this is like eight and a half, nine. Like Taco number one in Chelsea Market. Dude, Go you get guys some. gotta hit that place up. Fire. Mobster Paul. Paul, Big Paul Castellano of the Gambino crime family. He was murdered. Right here. Like Barks? Look on this that. side. Look, oh, he's still laid out. I'd have a drink with the, the old gangsters. You staying out? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's going on? Where are you? We're in a bar right now. Look, hey, Juan. Look. Look just showed up. There's your bike. Whoa. That's really? right, baby. Look, you got one too. All right. We'll see All you tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Bye. Later. yesterday on motorcycle. Yeah, that's bike life, dude. Look at I'm smiling watching these fools go by. Keep on 2022, baby. What's up? Yeah. This was one building. We made it to the 9-11 Memorial. This is where the buildings were. I was in like sixth or seventh grade when crazy how much this changed the world. I figured I would show one. Statue of Liberty. What'd you get? Show me the shot. There it is, dude. Up for a lot of people. What's up, dog? What's this bull stand for? It's supposed to stand for like, I don't know, strength or something the ferociousness of our stock market. <laughs> we spent six days over here on the road. Juan made a deal with me and you guys. He said, I'm gonna buy a DX and I'm 100% learning balance wheelies before the end of the year. Did you say that? I did say that I'm buying the DX. He said that if he doesn't wheelie by the end of the year, I'd give the bike away. He would give the bike away to one of your viewers. Yeah, so that's kind of going to be my motivation. How many months do I have? You got like three, three, four months. Three, four months. I mean, if I don't know if I'd have enough time to get a DX set it up and then learn how to wheelie on that, like really proper wheelie, or I've never gone out to a lot and tried to practice. Like every time I try to wheelie, it's like when we either go on a little ride and I mess around, or like when we did the how to's. And that was really it. That's all my like wheelie practice. So I do feel like if I hit it for a couple hours for a couple days consecutively, I'll get it down. And Gabe gave me a little bit more insight on slipping the clutch and stuff like that. So I gotta try it. All right, there you go. You guys heard it live. Juan's making deals with all of us. What airport are we at right now? JFK. We're at JFK and we're heading to LAX. Thanks for letting me come up here. Yeah, no problem. This is the 767. I could not imagine. <laughs> well, thanks for letting me come up here and yeah, check it no out. Yeah, no problem. Very cool. Yeah, pretty smooth flight for the most part, so. Awesome. Five hours, 26 minutes. There we go, man. Yeah. Thank you. Still on the road. We just landed at LAX. Our first vlog is going live right now. It's in premiere mode. Dude, I'm excited. Excited to be back. But I'm ready for uh, everyone to check this out. It's gonna be sick. There's a lot of cool footage. Our mind's blown. There's a lot of comments right now. We're gonna hit these. Thank you guys so much for watching this vlog series. We are so stoked on it. We're gonna keep this up. Keep following along. Watch all these vlogs. Thank you so much. See you later.